Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obueda. Let's tell him thank you. Let's tell him thank you. Let's magnify him. Let's worship him. Praise him. Let's believe God for healing, for miracles tonight. I'm in for something big tonight. Uh, let the limitation be broken. Uh, let the challenges come to an end. Uh, somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Praying the Holy Ghost, praying the Spirit, praying the Spirit. I like us to pray in the Spirit for a while. Thank you, Lord. I feel a strong anointing here tonight. God will be giving you answer. <clears throat> By the Spirit of God, you will know what to do. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You can take your seat. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Day what today? Fifteen. Oh. It's getting more exciting. Hallelujah. Thank you everyone for being here tonight. And today we'll be looking at the blood and the word. We're supposed to do this yesterday, but we had an experience that changed everything yesterday. So the blood and the word is your priesthood. I said having the revelation of the blood of Jesus will determine how you manifest your priesthood. You know the scripture established in Revelation chapter 1. It said we are kings and priests unto our God. We are what? We are kings and priests unto our God. But we cannot truly walk in authority. If we don't walk in the understanding of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the resources of the New Testament believer. It's a unlimited resources. <laughs> it's a supernatural resources that we can use in any warfare and produce uncommon results. There is power in the blood of Jesus. You know, when we say in Jesus' name, we're actually exercising or releasing authority. One of the ways we release authority, our authority, is when we pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I said one of the ways we release our authority is when we pray in the name of Jesus. When we pray in the name of Jesus, we saw Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7. Peter and John was going to the temple. During the hour of prayer. And when Peter looked up to this man. He said, Siva and go, none do I have. The man looked up. He told him, he said, look unto us. And when he did, he said, Siva and go, none do I have. But such as I have, I give you in the name of Jesus. You know, someone else can say in the name of Jesus and nothing happened. But why did Paul, sorry, why did Peter say in the name of Jesus rise up and walk? Because he has the revelation of the name. Until we have the revelation of the blood of Jesus, we cannot enforce our dominion. There are certain things that may be happening around you and you just keep tolerating it. You are not able to defeat it. You are not able to overcome it because you don't have the revelation of the blood of Jesus. If a Christians understand the power in the blood, it will change your prayer language. It will change how they pray. You see, you pray from your level of understanding. I said what? You pray from your level of understanding. Talk about them. You know, there are Christians who are demon conscious. They are no word of God conscious. They, are, they, they exercise more faith in witchcraft 
that they can exercise faith in the word of God. They are more conscious of the devil. They can pray for 30 minutes without calling the devil for 25 minutes. It's a thinking. But God doesn't want you to think that way. He wants you to think from what the finished work did. He wants us to think from the revelation of the blood of Jesus. He said the lamb was slain to receive power. So we have been called into a life of power. But we can't live that life of power without having the revelation of the power. Wow. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Huh? We can't live a life of power without having the revelation of the power. We can't live a life of power without having the revelation of the power. In fact, John, well, fact, John's greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. The greater one lives in your inside. The more you have the revelation of the greater one that dwells in your inside, it will strengthen your work of faith. What strengthens our work of faith is when we have the revelation of the Christ in us. And this is why tonight we are talking about the blood of Jesus. What happened when we said the blood of Jesus? For some people, the blood of Jesus has become an old school. But let me say this to you. That is the root of redemption. There is a redemption because there is a blood. There is a redemption because there was the blood of Jesus. If no blood of Jesus, no salvation. No blood of Jesus, no what? No salvation. That is why we take the communion. When we take the communion, what are we trying to do? We remember there is a remembrance taking place. There is an understanding taking place because we choose to remember the power in that blood. There is healing in the blood of Jesus. There is deliverance in the blood of Jesus. There is a miracle in the blood of Jesus. You don't know what to pray? When you begin to say the blood of Jesus, the kingdom of darkness recognize that. It's not just for a young convert. It's not just for a young believer. Oh, he's a young believer. That is why he's saying the blood of Jesus. Let me say this to you. You got to learn how to plead the blood over your life. You got to learn how to plead the blood of Jesus over your home. I plead the blood of Jesus over my cars. I plead the blood of Jesus over our home. We plead the blood of Jesus over our children. You got to learn how to plead the blood over the things you have. He said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb. There was something about that blood. That when the dead angel passed through Egypt. Wherever he see the blood, he passed over. You know why? The blood is a mark of identity. Washed by the blood. You are more dangerous than the enemy. You are not the one to be afraid of witchcraft. If you're afraid of witchcraft, it's because you're not hearing the word of God. If you're hearing the word of God, you're supposed to be superior. You're supposed to be in charge. You're supposed to be in control because there is power in the blood. There is healing in the blood. There is deliverance. Where? In the blood. There is life in the blood. You've been going through satanic harassment. You see yourself always, you're going up and then you come down, you go up, you come down. You can stop that, ex that experience. And how are you going to stop that experience? By the revelation right now is speaking increase. The blood of Jesus is speaking life. It's speaking hope. It's speaking a better life. You can't be frustrated when you have the revelation of how the blood works. It doesn't matter what is happening around you right now. It is subject to the power of the blood of Jesus. Maybe the lineage where you came from, nobody has been able to rise by the revelation of that blood. You can rise beyond every limitation and the cycle around you. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Let's go to Revelation 12 verse 11. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Thank you, Father. 
In Revelation 12 verse 11, look at what he said here. Thank you, Lamb of God. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. How did they overcome him? How? How did they have their victory? Is it by tears? Is it by worry? How? By the blood of the Lamb. That simply means the blood of the Lamb is a miracle too. The blood of the lamb. He said they overcame him. He came, but they overcame him. <laughs> they said, to poverty and luck. There is power in this blood. He said, and they overcame him. How did they overcame him? And overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word, the word of their testimony. When God's word is in your spirit, you see things from God's perspective. Huh? When God's word is in your spirit, you see things from God's perspective. There is how people who have the revelation of the will of God think. There is how people who have the revelation of the will of God functions. The revelation of his will empowers. You don't have money in your pocket. And you look at yourself. I was sharing today, I was teaching today, I said to the people, I said, don't ever trust in money because money is not stable. If you go to the foreign exchange market, every day something happens to currency. It's either it's up, it's down. It's up, it's down. So you, money is not my source. Don't make money your source. When God is your source, money becomes your servant. And that is what God wants from you. He wants money to be your servant, not money becoming your source. How can you make money your source? You can't trust money. You can't trust money. more if, if you make decisions in life based on who pays you more, you have trouble in life. You can't be led by money. You have to be led by the Spirit. If you're led by money, you're going to be hot. Because the Spirit of God has a perfect future for you. A perfect destiny for you. He can say, sit down here. He can say, sit down there. It's not just about the money. Because when you trust in money, that simply means your life is in danger. The psalmist said in Psalm 23 verse 1, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. So when we read this scripture here, it said, and they overcame him. Not only him, they overcame. They, came, they overcame everything he came with. He comes with tea. He comes with lack. There are certain financial situations that is a manifestation of a demonic experience. Telling you, there are certain financial situations that people go through. It's not just normal because they have made effort, like every other person made effort, and things work for them. But they made all the effort, it never worked for them because there is a satanic conspiracy. And how do you deal with that satanic conspiracy? The first foundation is the word foundation. Taking the word of God into your spirit. The more of the word of God that makes his way into your spirit will determine how you see things. One of the greatest gifts you can give to anybody in life is the word. One of the greatest gifts you can have in your life is the word of God. The money is in the world. Where is the money? 
He's in the world. I was sharing with some business people that will have some meeting this evening. Uh, I was, telling, well, was sharing about how to use God's word to build business. How to take the word of God. The scripture said, I'm the Lord your God that gave you the power to get wealth. So getting wealth takes power. It's beyond strategy. It takes power. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. Empowered. Until you are empowered, you can't overcome anything. And that empowerment comes when he came, he said, and they overcame him. Not only him. Everything he represents was overcome. Everything he comes with. He comes with sickness. He comes with delay. He comes with ignorance. One of the greatest weapons of Satan. When Satan wants to destroy people's life, you know one of the things he will send to them? Ignorance. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. He said, my people, you never deny them. They are destroyed for what? For lack of knowledge. What is lack of knowledge? It's lack of revelation. Progressive revelation of God's word. They lack progressive revelation of the word of God. The word of God. God is a mirror. I get to this mirror called God's word. Then I look at my life from the mirror. I can boldly say where you saw me this evening. Why? From the mirror I saw the future. Where do you see the future from? From the mirror. From the mirror. A man started a business many years ago. Not up to $500 in his hands. And he said to God, if you ever prosper this business, I will give you 90% of the proceed. And you know what? Something crazy hard, he gave God 90%. And God looked at him like, I think you're serious about what you said. And then that proceed came, he gave God 90%. You know what happened? His 10% became so much for him that he cannot exhaust his 10%. Some people are arguing about tithes. Some people have left there. Some people are arguing about 10%. If the man in the old covenant was doing 10%, don't you think the New Testament is better? The percentage would be more. <laughs> better percentage, better increase. Huh? Nobody's after your money. Better percentage, better what? There are people I'm believing God to meet them to give them offering. I'm believing God. The day I will see them. I'm, as, let them come, I will give them. You know why? They are good grounds. They are good grounds for seed. There are grounds that are not good grounds. You put something to choke. And God wants you to begin to see yourself from the word. Where do you see yourself from? You don't see yourself from God. You don't see yourself from what they said. That is nowhere to see yourself. You see yourself from the word. That is the mirror. You see your life. You see your dream. You see your future. Everything you're going to be is already in the word of God. So when I get to God's word, I'm standing before my future. What is my future? Proverbs 4 verse 18, the part of the just. So it came back. And let me say this to you like I was sharing with some folks. I said, a lot of people talk about God with their lips, but their heart is not connecting. Like I was doing an illustration for someone. I said, you can say this person is faithful. Let's take for instance. This person reports to this office every day. Reports. But on her way going to the office, she was, I'm tired of this job. Only me, only me, you know. But the person is going on. And people have seen her or seen him. Now then people will say, this guy is very faithful. You know what you say? Because you see him going there every day. But that doesn't mean that he's faithful. Because you don't know the condition of his heart. It is the condition of his heart that reveals his level of faithfulness. Not just his heart. I told you last week that you can be visible but not available. You remember that? <laughs> that you can be visible 
But you are not available. He said, and they overcame him by the blood. There are things to overcome. It's time to go to another level of your life. And how are you going to do that? You're going to do that by God's word. So it is the word and the blood that gave them the testimony. It is what? The word. And when it comes to God's word, that's why I used to encourage people that you consistently feed your spirit otherwise you go dry. You consistently, can I hear consistently? You consistently feed, feed your spirit man. Why do you need, because you can't really go far. I told you an experience I had one time. I was driving. So, before I, before I took the car from the mechanic, the mechanic told me, ah, oh, Pastor, no problem. The fuel, and the car left me on the road. Guess where? The middle of most, the most important junction in this water court, Jerry Junction. Of all the place, my car didn't stop. This thing happened over close to five years ago. It just stopped there. As anointed as I am, the car stopped. The car didn't hear that I'm an anointed man. I just called the officers I went to preach to. They just, ah, Pastor, what's the problem? There was no fuel. But it never indicated on the line. That is how it is spiritually. Some things will not indicate, but they are eating under. Am I making some sense today? Uh, it, it, it's not when you cut something that start dying. It may look fresh, but after a while, it starts drying up. And when it's drying up, most people don't know. That was why John said, he said, ye are cleansed through the word. Jesus was sharing in the book of John. He said, ye are cleansed through the word which I've spoken to you. So your transformation comes by daily immersing your spirit in the word. Daily. A great man of God that most of us respect around the world. A great father in the faith in the U.S. His wife was talking about him today. How people lied about him. Lied. And BBC carried the lie. The lie was all over the world. When he heard it, it affected his health. But he stood and overcome it. And they overcame him. By the blood. There are rumors that can be carried about you. And that can flat your ministry, business or anything. And that is why we get into the word of God. Because God's word empowers you to resist. You don't have resisting capacity. Except you have revelation. You know get up. You go fall. You know, get you don't have resisting capacity, except you have what revelation knowledge. Because things will be trying to come against you from this wing, from that wing, from that wing. But because the word of God is in your spirit, you're taking those giant steps. Those steps are coming because of the word of God in your spirit. If the word of God is not in your spirit, my friend, you will go down. And that was why I said, and they overcame him. How? By the blood of the lamb and the word. Testimony is not only when God does something for you. Testimony also is when you begin to declare the word of God. Huh? You know, many of us have said, do you have a testimony? No, pastor, I don't have a testimony. Testimony is also when you stand on God's word and you start declaring the word of God, you are testifying. Overcoming by the blood of the Lamb. The blood works wonder when our faith is in the blood. I said the blood works wonder when our faith is That's why we take communion. That's why we break bread. Communion should not be something you do once in a while. 
It should not be something you do once in a month or once in two months. No, it is a way of life for a New Testament believer to consistently break bread. At the time I was dealing with a particular issue, I was almost breaking bread four times in a day. As I, re- as I read the word of God and I research, speaking the word, what am I doing? Controlling the atmosphere around that situation. Every situation comes with an atmosphere. It takes revelation knowledge to subdue the atmosphere of that situation and then you can successfully deal with the situation. Every situation comes with atmosphere. There's an atmosphere it comes with. And sometimes people can think, it's something that is very small. It's something that is very small. Before I realize it escalates. Just go. And this is why tonight, the Holy Ghost will give you word of knowledge. He will give you what? Word of knowledge. He will give you word of knowledge. What is the essence? a word of knowledge with word of knowledge you know what has happened and then by the spirit you know what to do you receive word of knowledge word of knowledge is not only for prophets every new testament believer have access to the flow to the flow of the spirit if you're a new testament believer you have access to the manifestation of the ministry of the Spirit. And this manifestation begins to happen as we yield ourselves to the Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. You receive word of knowledge. You begin to receive word of wisdom about the situation. You are praying and then the Lord spoke to you. You know what sharing with people about supernatural strategy? As you pray in the Spirit, Listen. As you pray in the spirit, listen. Some of your solution comes when you're praying. As you pray in the spirit, listen. And sometimes it's good to pray with your diary by the side. If you're talking to somebody, don't you think you guys, they can reply and talk back to you? Huh? One day God said, to me, I'm trying to remember it. I said, oh God, where is it? I was, I was trying to remember this thing. Ah, I was think happened to me. I knew he had said something, but I was trying to come into it. And most of us miss the moment. There are certain moments that comes to you that will never repeat back. And if you think you can recap, you can recall it. My friend, you're wasting your time. In Habakkuk chapter 2, 8. Are you more brilliant than Habakkuk? He said, right. Right. He, that he that read it will run in the running. Because what he's feeding on is the revelation of the will of God, and that revelation will stir him up for action. So they become tired, tired, retired. I think they move, they become tired. This is why I said your dealings with God must be documented. Your dealings with God, your encounters, your visitation. I went to my library some few weeks back and I brought out a diary of 2,000 and through encounters, visitation. What is the essence of those things? They bring refreshing that will lead to supernatural strength. The things that God has spoken. There are a lot of people that miss their destiny because they were so emotionally connected to something that God was freeing them from. Religious spirit is a terrible spirit. Anything that can harm your life, if you can overcome the spirit of religion, you'll be successful in life. It's a terrible spirit. If God is freeing you from something, Go with it. Free yourself. 
How do you know you're in the will of God? A, you have peace. And you don't have peace. It means you're not in the will of God. And if you're trying to encourage yourself, nothing will work. <laughs> the peace factor. If it is not there, my brother, it doesn't matter how you fast. It doesn't matter how you pray. That peace of God that surpasses all understanding. The peace factor. Abraham did not become rich because he was smart. He became rich because he walked in obedience. You can be smart and be broke. You can be smart and be frustrated. You can be smart and life is full of struggle. But you cannot listen to the ministry of the spirit and not receive direction. How do you know the will of God? The peace. You know what peace will do for you? Peace will strengthen your faith. That's what peace will do. Peace will strengthen. Number two. Another. That you are in the will of God. You are energized. You are energized. There are people I don't listen to. <laughs> Not because I don't like them. I don't want to die early. You hear what I said? Huh? You didn't hear me? You heard me? I don't listen to them. There are teachings that come with death. There are teachings that make you look stupid before the devil. There are teachings that exhort witchcraft above the redemption realities. Experiences that people have had. And you know sometimes, I used to watch movies. And sometimes I would see how things would be going wrong in that movie. Then I would say to myself, they don't know God. If you know the Holy Ghost, you cannot die like that. Don't tell me that. You cannot die like that. Inside of me, I'll be, I'm watching the movie. I said, doesn't know. How can you be? How can you walk into death? Maragabarababa. As many that leg. Then I bring the Holy Ghost somehow. Hallelujah. Some get me angry, I'd say, remove that side. I don't like that one. <laughs> I praise God. I can't. Can you be the only one that is always a victim? What is the problem with you? If the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, my friend, you won't be in error for a long time. Your eye open. I was sharing with somebody that when I was a young Christian, because of the kind of church I went to, our church didn't have this kind of teaching, this kind of word thing. There was no word. I was a young Christian, so I needed help. I used to attend four churches. Four. What am I looking for? Ask me. I was looking for the word of God. I was, I was so hungry. That one day I prayed a prayer. I said, God, if you ever find this your life, God, Help me to word. I will distribute it freely. Please help me. I know there are people like me that are also hungry. I don't want to go. I don't go to a church and I come back. I don't know what to do, my friend. No, I need some revelation. I have bills to pay, I have children, so I need word. I didn't come to play church with you. I need revelation for my future. I need rhema. I need encounter. I need visitations. The wickedness in life is real. So I need revelation of the word. You know what happened? 
I started searching for where we hear the word. The one that I saw one man. I didn't ask the man, I just start following the man. Doesn't matter what the man did to me, or I'll be following the man. The man was embarrassed me. I'm still following. He, I was not bothered about the only thing I was bothered about. I wanted to learn this word. Because I've seen people who knew it, how their life changed. I wanted to know how the word worked. Because you can have the Bible and still live in frustration all your life. You can have the Bibles, your life never worked. How that man is a Christian was so frustrated. I needed the word to open up the book. My brothers and sisters, I was so hungry to a point that my hunger drove me into places. Hunger. I was not looking for signs and wonder. I knew once I get the word, all those things will follow. I knew the word was the root of the future. And if I never take his word serious, I was going to have a slow motion in life. Life was going to be slowed down. When you make the dumb, they rise, you stay there where you did. Because the capacity to move forward in no day. The world is like life. How did Abraham got to the promised land? How? By word. God was talking to Joshua. In Joshua 1 verse 8, he said, This book of the law will not depart from, it's going to be your sword for the journey. You want to be successful? He said, this book. You're not just coming to church just for hearing. You're coming for ch to church for hearing and doing. You hear the word, you go back home and say, we must do the word. We must do the word. He said, the doers of the word is blessed. You can be gifted, but if you're not a doer of the word, get ready for big time struggle. Can be gifted. But if you are not a practitioner of truth, committed to doing, God honors doers. And people be wondering, how are you getting the funds? How are you getting this? How is this happening to you? Because you have gotten into that word. He said, God, you are my source. Money is not my source. God, you're my source. People are not my source. God, you're my, my husband is not my source. God, you're my source. My wife is not my source. God, you're my source. My friends are not my source. In Luke Gospel chapter 5. Let's go to Luke Gospel. By the word you reap the harvest. How are you going to reap the harvest? How, how, church, how? By what? Do you know there is a boldness that comes to you when you receive revelation? I told you this a few weeks back. I was in a church meeting where the guest who came to preach, great church, said he bought 90 million naira. When I heard that word, I said, God. I said, I count on one, two, three, 90 million. God is able to. Then another day I heard about a local church that bought a property for more than 450 million. You know, there are people you hear their testimonies of how they trusted God and he came and they begin to tell you about the word. How did they get it? About what? The word. Your solution to this situation is in the application of the word. Your solution to this situation is to get into the word. Don't be a Christian on the fence. If you are on the fence, you won't go far. No matter how gifted you are. Locally, you win. But when you get into that word, in Luke Gospel chapter 5, I want to show you something. From verse 3. Okay, let's do verse 1. Let's do verse 1. Luke Gospel 5, verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed, look at the number, say press, upon him to do what? Eh? Look at the top. Hear the word of God. 
to hear to hear to hear not to play oh. to hear how does faith come by hearing to hear the press to hear people we are getting their faith ready it's time that you tolerate the press to hear Are you present to hear? Many years ago, I went to a particular Bible study. When I went to the Bible study, I regret of going. The man was quoting the scriptures, he was not explaining them. Matthew this, John this, Andrew this, Luke this, James this. He was throwing it on us. More than 50 scriptures. You think you have preached to me? He was throwing this. What is he going to Bible study? What is Bible study? Is he quoting the scriptures or explaining it? When I left that place, I was bored. And he came with a very big Bible. I was quoting them. I was quoting them. Reference Bible. Quoting them. That is not what will bring life. It's not the quoting. He said they press to hear. What they press to hear. They press to hear. He stood by the leg of Genesis. They press to hear. Because they press to hear. He started ministering. 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 Somebody here press to hear. Your new goal is what? What is your new goal right now? What is your new goal? Press to hear. I want to hear. I want to get the word. The more of God's word you get into your spirit, your marriage will work well. The more of God's word you get into your spirit, you'll be more peaceful. The fears will go. The fears will leave you. The word of God will take away the fear. The fear of whether will our life work out. Anybody you see that is living by the word, they have a short future. Don't worry about them. It may be slow, but they will get there. <laughs> I didn't tell you. Anybody you see that is addicted to the word of God, it may be slow, but they will get to their destination. You know why? The word of God will take root before bearing fruit. Root first. Root taking. You just a preacher. Eh? Just the word. Like people ask me, only the word, that is what you do, eh? I say, yes, only the word. What else will I do? And not that I will mix to it, that will make it work better like the word of God. I don't even like it because some things smell. I say some things do what? They smell, I tell you the truth. He said, oh, pastor, you need to pray special prayer for me. We don't pray special prayer for people. We'll pray for people. That's what we'll do. Oh, pastor, you need to do. You know, I told you one story one time. I was a very good pastor. And somebody said, let's go and do all night somewhere. Don't invite me for all night. Too. Not coming. You have devil in your village, take them out. He said, my name, you will cast that devils. This pastor is not spiritual. You that is spiritual, do it. We left our home one night, me by myself, travel to somewhere. I regret of that journey. Then I said, nobody's going to fool me anymore in my life. I'm not that stupid. My mother no bomb more. Hallelujah. I'm not that stupid. So you know what happened? We got to the place. They said uh, the spirit affecting the family people. And then I later realized that most of the family people are not living by the word. So we think one way they drive out. Have you seen that most of us pastors don't even think? We just start praying. The man is not again. They are not committed to God. <laughs> Let nobody fool you, my brother. 
She's not born again. She's looking for deliverance. What kind of deliverance? How are you going to do that? Oh, you want to jump inside the kingdom? So, so you, 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 you know what happened? <laughs> My brother, that night was a very funny night. Then God was showing that if you do like this, you will die quick. Don't follow this route. It's a very long road to success. They were digging ground. They would say, the thing went to this side. The thing went to this side. I was wondering how demons travel by ground. <laughs> Don't bother. That was many years, not now. <laughs> before, before I used to be like that. <laughs> so we went to the meeting, all kinds of things. Two minutes later, they told us the pastor that was doing those things that the devil has attacked him. He fell on the ground, he needed prayer. I said, God. Inside of me, the verse, where the verse. <laughs> May God deliver me. <laughs> stupid, stupid things. <dude. laughs> you know the reason for all these things that want to go. They are looking for shortcut to be healed, shortcut to be delivered, shortcut. My brother, some things are not shortcut. You must be the doer of the word to be blessed. Let's just face it. You can't shortcut everything. Some things has process. As you're sitting down hearing the word, there are things dropping. You don't see them, but they are dropping. And the more you keep amassing your spirit, the day will come that you just say, Oh my God, now we did do this kind of thing. <laughs> because capacity is rising as revelation is making its way into your spirit. Most people don't know what happens when they are in the atmosphere of revelation. The word washes you. I wake up from sleep in the morning. Most time, first thing I'll be start listening to is scriptures. This morning, I wake up, the book of Hebrews playing. Our listener was praying in tongues, hearing. Then, before yesterday, it was Proverbs. You know, there are things you feed on, it strengthens you. to hear the word because as you hear the word you will start receiving insights into you to change how you think and until God change how you think he can't work with you my pastor used to say something he said the God who give one will give five eh? the God who give one will do what will give five the same God then we'll have it in first Corinthians he said the same spirit the same God but diversities of oppression. Because someone said, I will press to hear the word. This is your new decision. Your new decision is to get into the word of God, not to be depressed. Complain, nag, worry, cry, tears, get handkerchiefs, start to do. That, that will not solve your problem, my dear. You like cry for nothing next tomorrow. Ooh, 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 ooh. If you don't answer this week, I will backslide next month. Your absence doesn't change anything. So you trying to threaten yourself, I've come for these 40 days now. God, have luck that you solve my problem. Otherwise, this is the last time you will see me. In the first place, as you're threatening God, telling him this is the last time he will see you. What about the one you don't see? How many of you know that God fought battles for you don't see? <laughs> for so many people, what they call success is money. But there are things that are bigger than money. There are battles that God, you are life seated because there are many things that came your way. He stopped it. The only ones you come and testify were the one that come close to you. That sometimes he just make you understand. Said, Praise the Lord. And only one of that last week. But God delivered me. You're testifying that one. What about the other ones there? So you can see that he has been so kind. He has been so good. His message endure for what? His message endure forever. They pressed to hear the word. Let, let's look at verse 4. Verse 4 said, Now when he left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch into the deep and let down your net for a drought. And verse 5 he said, And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have
have toiled all night. <laughs> They toiled all night because he was not with, he was not with them all night. He was not in my life. You know, I've been going to church, I've been suffering, I've been struggling. The question is God with you. How do I know God is with you if his word is with you? How do I know that God is with you? If his word is in you, if the word of God is in you, it means God is in you. If the word of God is not in you, God is not in you. If the word of God is, see, don't come to God to try. No, I saw a sticker one day, say, try Jesus. Don't put it in your cow. Try Jesus. Try who? He said, he that cometh to God must believe, not to try. Try what? The Jews shall live by faith, not by trial. This is not tombot, tombot something. It's not trial by error like this. God, if it is you, like some, some people pray. You know what, they, when they finish praying, they say, God, if you really want me to travel, let the rain fall from morning to evening. And you forget that some of your neighbors are flooding. And then the rain starts falling. <laughs> God wants me to travel. Oh, you don't know that spirit can make rains to come down. You can't put fleas on God. God, if you really want me to have that money, let two mosquitoes collide together. <laughs> you know people could pray all kinds of stupid prayers. See, I, I was telling my wife, said, if you, if you know what God used to hear, if you hear 0. 0.0001 of it, you just say, uh, what God used to hear. If you hear prayers, even you go and slide, just shut up your mouth for the first time. What is wrong with you? How can you be talking like that? <laughs> You'll be tempted. One day I was in a meeting. A man was praying, Oh God, the sky is my limit. I need to correct this man. Brother, it's not the sky. It's not the sky. So, so we are praying. What are you praying? That's the question. People are, they are praying. Oh, today, if you see what happened in church, we pray though. What did they pray? What was that they pray? I used to do that kind of thing many years ago. We have even prayed to a point that we break our head somewhere. But was that make it prayer? What is the content of your prayer? Whenever you want to pray, get into the word. Pray from the word. Or pray in the spirit. Get into the world. Pray from your new nature. Pray from the knowledge of your identity. How can somebody pray? Oh God, please don't let Satan to see me. Oh God, don't let them see me. Who? They will see you. Is that not seeing you? Oh, you don't have Bible. It said, let your life show the what? The man will be blind. <laughs> See, and then they started turning glory to your to God. Their next expectation of all nations are wait for what for the manifestation of the presence of God. As you go home tonight, you want to pray. He said, Father, I thank you. We are moving forward in the name of Jesus. The path of the just is a shining light. It's getting brighter and better. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory. Lord, we praise you. Maybe your next door neighbor may church you go to, they don't teach you how to bind and cast out the devil. You say, we'll do binding. But binding is not every day thing. It's not every minute. I bind the spirit that is moving now. Some believers have become more demon conscious. They see somebody. Pass. Every spirit that follow her and come in here. What is your problem? The word of God said greater is he. Now fear is coming up. 
Watch, watch them. Watch them. Watch them very well. Watch them. You know the kind of thing. You can't live in fear. Second Timothy 1 verse 7. For God have not given us a spirit of fear. When you pray from fear, operation sleep well. Hmm? You will sleep well. You had a dream. And in the dream you see yourself died. <laughs> The reason why you wake up is, not, is because you're not going to die. Huh? Then, you know what to do? You smile at the devil. And tell me, see, with long life, I came back. <laughs> you can mess demons up, oh. You can make them have a heart attack. You sleep tonight and they bring food in the dream. Start eating it. Clean your plate very well. Shine it. <laughs> God. The, ah, Peter was in a vision. He was hungry before he went to that vision. God now brought food. He said, I don't eat any uncommon thing. I said, now you. They could not time me that kind of thing. Who eat is finished. Who pastor have been initiated? Good initiation. Why will it be? Okay, you saw a, a food you eat in the dream. They say you have been initiated. What about when you drive a, a, a Range Rover in the dream? God is promoting me. He they see you. He they see you. He they see what he they do. This one, he don't knock her out. Why you go? Something a wrong information from somebody. They say you eat in the dream, you have been initiated. Initiated to where? Who is initiating you? Then children are they give us something. No. No. When I grew up, I got revelation. Whatever I want to eat, I will eat. He said, You bless it. You eat it. If I give my life to Christ in my place where I came from. They don't eat three live yam. How many of you know that I am? If you come from my place and you eat it, get ready for your body to be scattered by the devils. So when I got born again, I said, I want to experiment my salvation. Whatever this salvation I receive is the original one. Then. One of my pastors, we, we have food. I said, what is kind of food? He said, still living. I said, yes, bring it and come. I want to check out something. I need to get to a point in my life where I start disagreeing with some things I've believed for many years. I started eating, finished eating. I went to our family house. I told my siblings, I ate that, you know, that food. They said, eh, hey, hey. we'll pray for you that God will help you. So after one week, I didn't hear from the girls. Two weeks pass. I went to run my pastor to that place again. They have that food. I said, bring it. They said the first thing to be intentional. I said, eating, eating, eat, finish. Waiting for the gods. He didn't show up. It's nonsense. But when I was an unbeliever, <laughs> as I see you bringing it, I'm even taking off. Because like a god in that place. How can you have a two both here. Hey, you know, there are, there are teachers and there are people in church in the body of Christ that are bringing these things in. All the firstborn. Where are you getting these things from? He said, Jesus is the firstborn of many brethren. And the secondborn is who? Guess who? Come on, come on. In. People are becoming more clever in this church. <laughs> it's the firstborn of many brethren. So, who is the second one? People like us now. See Jesus' younger brother. <laughs> See Jesus' younger brother. I want you to leave this service tonight with a different thinking. You're the younger brother of Jesus. Jesus is your elder brother. The firstborn. So, you are not the firstborn. You have a firstborn in your family. Who is that? Of many brethren. So anywhere you go, they said, all the things I used to want the first one, don't even come at you. 
When he died on the cross, those things died. Allah, ma, 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 ma. You need to change your thinking. You need to get to a place where you can say, God, I trust your word. Sometimes when I see those flowers, I used to get angry. First daughter's problem. First, first born never have the revelation of the identity. And the day they receive that revelation, that demon will take off. Jesus is who? Of who? How many brethren are here tonight? Wave your hand. Are you among them? Uh, who is the second born here? Who is the second born here tonight? Who is the, say, who is the younger brother of Jesus tonight? Who is the younger sister of Jesus here tonight? Who, who are the members of his family? The firstborn is in the house. The second borns are everywhere. And God does not have grandchildren. Hallelujah. We are the sons of God. Glory to God. Tonight you will sleep very well. Those demons will be peeping from window. He has gone to another church. <laughs> Praise God. You will sleep tonight very well. And the angels will be attending to you. Tonight all your heritage, your right is back to you. Can I hear better? Amen. All your heritage, your right, everything that belongs to you, oppression manifestation tonight. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, may it garrison your heart, uh, may it overtake you, may it strengthen you. In the name of Jesus, uh, may every depression go, may every fear and anxiety go. In the name of Jesus, uh, you are the son of God. You are the son of God. The blood of Jesus is speaking on your behalf. Healing, deliverance, protection. May in all these things, you are more than a conqueror. You are bigger than what they said because the life of God is in you. Let's lift our hands and thank him. Tell him thank you. He's speaking live. The devil is a bastard. The devil is a bastard, I'm telling you. He can't stop you. That witch can't stop you. You will carry your children. You will carry your children, children. In the name of Jesus, you will go out and return back. From today, may your story change. In the name of Jesus, may the hand of God take you to your destination. In the name of Jesus, may you begin to see the manifestation of the glory of the Father. They said, can anybody come out from that family? Tell them to have stand up. <laughs> Watch me. I'm not just the breadwinner, the bread distributor. Bread distributors raise breadwinners. That's the anointing upon you tonight. You're going to raise breadwinners. When you get home tonight, you talk to yourself. You know what I like about Jesus? He likes to talk about himself. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because you are not telling me to. Wow. Just talk like that. Before people. He will just talk about himself. Talk about yourself. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In him I live, move, and have my being. Talk about yourself. Take the word and speak about yourself. The days of looking like you're intimidated is over. You're going to row out tonight. Amen. I said you will row out tonight. Amen. The word of God is coming into your spirit tonight. You are liberated from every limitation and struggle. In the name. You've been trying to read your Bible for a while. But tonight you will devour it. 
You've been trying to pray for one hour. Somebody here, you used to pray for a long time, but for a very long while now, to pray for one hour is a struggle. Receive the grace to pray. Be able to stretch for hours. Time you can go before God for six hours, nine hours, three hours, two hours. You're pounding, you're praying. You cannot pray, your skin remains the same. They tell you, the more you spend time with God, the better your tomorrow will be. You want a better tomorrow? Go and stay, spend time with God. Praying in tongues. Happy are ye if you have the faith. You know, one of the kind of best friends, you know, today I was, my best friend went out somewhere, one of our brothers joined us. And when he called me for what he wanted, he has told me what he wanted to do. But while we were there, I received a word of knowledge from God. He said, yes, Apostle, I could see. One of the greatest gifts you have in life is to have people who could see through the future with you. People who can just take you. And the whole story change. The worst way to work with are people that doubt you. They doubt your vision. They doubt your future. You're trying to rise, but what they have can push you up. If you hang around with people that can't push you up, you can delay your destiny for the next 10 years. And that's the worst thing. I don't want to delay you. And you know what happened? Our faith came together this afternoon. What he was trying to do for, for many months. Instantly. It happened. Do you know when you relate to somebody who has a particular thing you're looking for, the tendency to have that thing quickly is there. Yes, eh? If you have not driven before, and then you keep coming to somebody who drives all kinds of cars, there will be a rub-off. To just rub off on you. You just see, it's a rub-off. And before I realize it, huh, you can have it, brother. You can have it. He's releasing the faith. Your spirit man is picking it. When Mary and Elizabeth met, what happened? What happened? Something. There is a staring. You, there are places where you go to. Your faith will shrink. Before your own eyes. You see it, it will come down. It will drop. Before you used to lift these things up. But you know if you lift them again. The thing where they make you lift them no day. This is why what you feed on matters. There I spent time listening. I will listen to the word, listen to the word, listen to the word, listen to the word. I don't just listen to crafts. I listen to good words. If it's to pay for it, I will pay on YouTube. I will pay. Why? Because I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear. I keep hearing. Faith is rising. Then you hear somebody say, I was believing God for 20 million pounds last week. And then I was talking to God about it. You're hearing them. And God provided. Amen. Wow. We stood on this scripture. We stood on that scripture. You are now learning how to stand on scriptures and reap the results. There are people who have done some things. Hook up with them. I said, what? Do what? Hook up. That was what my friend did this afternoon. As he did it, miracle happened. There is a reaction. You, you don't live in fear anymore. And they tell you, you will not live in fear. The word needs to go in. The word needs to go in. The word needs to go in. The word of God needs to go in. Make his way. Your house should be an atmosphere of word. Word. Sometimes you're in the toilet and you're hearing. How can you? Oh my God. I feel like to preach, but time has gone. But let me leave you with this. See, the more you press into the word, the fear will be dissolved. The, the limitation will be broken and then you will see clearly you will see clearly concerning that business you will see clearly concerning ministry you will see clearly concerning life suddenly your fears are gone sometimes God has told you to do something but fear has kept you back you are afraid what about if you fail what about if it does not work because the word of God is not entering but once you start feeding well the faith for adventure what they call it faith for adventure begins to rise I saw this testament, then I ran up. I had a, a dear man of God last week. I was listening. He said, 
Many years ago, he wanted to buy a plane, a jet plane. God told him to buy a jet, but he didn't have the money. And his friend told him, you can do it. You can, with whatever you can believe God for, God can do it for you. He said, as he heard that guy, faith started rising in his heart. Because you know why faith comes by hearing. This is why you have to be careful who you share your visions with. There are people you share your visions with. They, are, they, are, you, they, they pull you upward. But there are people as you finish sharing your vision, it will die before you. You will never talk about it anymore. Why? Because those who don't have the capacity to help you bet what God has placed in you. It's not everybody that can help you bet your dream. It's not everybody that have what it takes to help you deliver your destiny. It's not everybody. There are people that when meeting with them, boom, people will notice you met with them. They, as they minister, as they bring the word, the baby inside of you, the hand will start coming out. The leg will start coming out because those words you're receiving is causing change. But there are people, while the baby is developing, they start talking, the baby start dying. Start dying. That's what happened to so many people in life. Church, rise up. Let's pray. I'd like you to pray in the spirit. We'll have the next 10 minutes to round up this meeting. Pray in the spirit. I'd like you to pray for hunger for the word. That's what I want you to pray for. Hunger. Hunger. Ricarate se te te caprata baba. Honda that God a dry for the word. Honda for the word. If you're pressing, you will have results. I'm telling you. If you're pressing to the word of God, you will have results. You will change your own story. You will change your own story if you're pressing to the word. There is life. In the word, there is strength in it. I will pray in the spirit. If you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like you to say this after me if you're watching this broadcast. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer with us, it means you're born again and the Spirit of God will lead you from this day forward. I want to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teachings on YouTube. More than 2,000 videos on YouTube. Uh, we have a very huge video library there that can help you grow and develop in your work of faith. Also, you can watch me on finishworktv.com. You can have my book on by going to amazon.com. For the things you need to know about your future, it's available on Amazon. In the next few weeks, you'll be getting my new book on Amazon. There is greatness in you. It's coming very soon. So get ready to purchase There is greatness in you. We love you. Until our next broadcast, please don't forget this. There is greatness in you and Jesus is coming soon. Hallelujah. Church, 